Tiggy Leg Burke, William and Harry's Beloved Nanny and Princess Diana's Nightmare. The story of Prince Charles and Princess Diana is like the stuff of a soap opera, which only gets convoluted as the time goes. There was perhaps another participant in the Charles, Diana, Camilla love triangle. At least, that was what the Princess of Wales believed, who at the end of her life suspected that both she and Camilla were just a distraction of Prince Charles, so that he could marry Tiggy Legbrook, a beloved nanny of Diana's children. Prince Charles married Camilla in 2005, and they've been together ever since. Everyone believed that their 35-year marriage was perfect and they both truly loved each other. However, in 2007 Prince Charles's reputation took a big hit with the release of an 832-page report by Scotland Yard Commissioner Lord John Stevens. In it, he presented the result of the investigation into the death of Princess Diana and Dodi Al-Fayed on August 31, 1997. As revealed in the report, for years before the fateful trip to Paris, Diana was sure Charles was cheating on her, not with Camilla, but with the nanny of William and Harry, Tiggy Legburk. Until the very end, she was convinced of Charles' infidelity with Tiggy. Diana expressed her fears in a letter to her butler Paul Burrell in 1993, which he would later release to the public in 2003. In an edited version of the letter, Diana admitted that she suspected Charles of planning a car crash to remove her and then marry an unknown woman. The press was sure she was talking about Camilla. However, in 2007, when Lord Justice Scott Baker examined the original letter, it was revealed Diana was actually talking about Tiggy. The revelation was confirmed by Lord Mishkin, the princess's solicitor. According to the witness, in 1995 Diana tried to convince him that Camilla and she weren't really Charles's lover, but a decoy for his real favorite, the nanny of his sons. Mishkin didn't pay much attention to her words back then, after all, the princess was prone to drawing paranoid conclusions. But not long before his death in 2006, Lord Mishkin decided to tell the court about the meeting with Diana when she shared her concerns. Tiggy hadn't been working at Kensington Palace for 10 years, she was married to her school crush Charles Pettifer, raised two sons and ran her own mini hotel in Wales. After Stevens's report, the press rushed in to call William and Harry's former nanny and ask for her comment, but Tiggy didn't talk to anyone and only wished journalists a Merry Christmas. All these years, she was a good friend of the royal family and still remains one. Loved by William and Harry, she essentially replaced their mother, who was so obsessed with herself and her personal life that instead of appearing more often in kids' lives she preferred to simply hate the royal nanny. Between Tiggy and Diana. Alexandra. Anna Tiggy Legberg was hired as nanny to William and Harry in 1993, after Charles and Diana had officially separated. She was from an old British family, her mother was lady-in-waiting to Princess Anne, and her father was a respected merchant banker who served in the Royal Horse Guards. Tiggy studied at the Swiss boarding school Institute Alpen Weidmanet where Princess Diana also studied for one semester before dropping out, and later took a nursery teacher training course at the St. Nicholas Montessori Center. Her upbringing and education helped to get an enviable position almost immediately. Before divorcing with Charles, Diana regularly changed nannies for William and Harry, as she strongly feared her sons would love them more than her. However, after 1993, Diana lost the privilege of hiring staff, and all she could do was to silently watch her sons becoming more and more attached to the 28-year-old girl. The separation of parents is always a huge stress for the children, and if she wanted to maintain warm family relationships, Diana should have devoted twice as much time to William and Harry. But she seemingly preferred to scold Tiggy on every given occasion instead. Tiggy herself wasn't a saint either. From the first day in her position, she was critical towards Diana. Her statements soon started to make headlines, including this controversial one, I give them what they need at this stage, fresh air, a rifle, and a horse. She, yeah, Diana, gives them a tennis racket and a bucket of popcorn at the movies. Tiggy raised the princes following the then-popular Montessori system, which encouraged raising a sense of independence in the children and involved child-led activities. Such methods of the new nanny didn't always resonate with the royal family, however, Tiggy almost lost her position for smoking in the young prince's presence, as well as for allowing the boys to abseil down a 160 feet high dam without safety lines or helmets. But William and Harry constantly stood up for her in front of their father and grandmother. The bond between Tiggy and the young princes, whom she affectionately called my babies, was so strong that in 1996, 13-year-old Prince William, in order to avoid embarrassment, 
didn't invite his divorced parents to Eton College, 4th of June celebration, a grand occasion among the pupils and their parents. Instead, William came to the celebration while accompanied by Tiggy. In the meantime, Diana was getting angry. Not only was the princess feeling lonely and being on her own, but she was obsessed with the idea that Charles didn't love her nor Camilla, but Tiggy. Diana was even said to be convinced that the royal nanny had an abortion after becoming pregnant by the Prince of Wales. At one of the parties, Diana confronted Tiggy and in her usual theatrical manner said to her, so sorry to hear about the baby. The next day, Lady Dee's words were quoted by all the newspapers of the country. But Tiggy knew her worth, too. While Charles's secretaries tried to convince the public that the prince treats the nanny like uncle treats his niece, Tiggy hired lawyers with the permission from Elizabeth II. The case was taken up by lawyer Peter Carterook, who demanded from Diana's lawyers that she would apologize to Tiggy. And while she didn't receive any, there were no further publications in the press. Still, Diana wasn't backing down. For the last three years of her life she was said to order Tiggy to leave the room while calling her sons, Anne was also writing angry letters to Charles demanding to cut the time the nanny would spend with the young princess. Of course, it cannot be said that Tiggy completely replaced William and Harry mother. The boys still loved Diana and rejoiced when they saw her, and they greatly missed her after her death. Tiggy helped them to get through a difficult period, despite the bad blood between her and the princess.